Hello, Internet. Internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. It's Friday, and that means it's time to fire up another free-to-play game here on Big Dave is Cheap. This week, we're playing online racing game Drift City. This game comes to us from Games Campus, which is a fairly typical-looking free-to-play company, but they have a couple of unique wrinkles. Of course, Drift City being one of those, but they also offer an online golf game called Shot Online, and they have a collectible card game in their stable of games as well. You might also suspect that they may just have a cutesy anime MMO. They do. They may have a more gritty, realistic fantasy MMO, and they do, and they may have a generic MMO that somehow involves dragons, and they do. They actually also have a flying sim as well, so they are a unique, I suppose, company. Most of these games do look like Korean imports, Asian imports, uh, what have you. None of these games uh, look too appealing outside of Drift City and shot online. Uh, Cart, which is the uh, card game, actually looks kind of appealing, but I just think there are other things out there that fill that same niche, and I really don't want to invest myself into another card game system uh, when I'm already involved in a couple of different ones. So, Drift City. What the hell is it? Well, it's a semi-open-world-ish racing RPG, really. You're seeing the graphic style here. It is a sort of a cell-shaded, simplistic graphic style. I am driving in my uh, Jetta. I mean my whatever they call this instead of calling it a Jetta. Okay. There are a lot of obvious uh, rip-off cars, but you know, none of them are licensed, of course. There's the Impreza. Uh, there are Ferraris, Lamborghinis. Uh, GT, uh, GTs, all this sort of, you know, crazy cars. There's a lot of different stuff. This game is, uh, in many ways, about customizing your car, souping it up, getting it just right, getting the decals on that you want, the paint scheme, all that stuff. And uh, that's a pretty solid foundation for any uh, online game, you know, giving the player a lot of creativity tools. And, and it's a smart thing to do for a company like this. It also looks like they have some custom decal options. I really want to dig deeper into this game and see really what they have to offer, but frankly, I've only been playing it for about an hour right now, just going through some of the early missions, trying to get a feel for it. Uh, you spend a lot of the game in a, uh, a sort of open world area that has different questing hubs. You grab a quest and the quest is like, hey, this guy who's doing research on how to make a faster car engine needs this part. Go here and pick up the part and then come back and give it to the guy. And then you go and give the part to the guy, and he's like, hey, this part's great, but I actually need some other stuff, and I told your handler about that, so go back to the quest hub and get another mission to get some more stuff that I need for my crazy new futuristic engine. And they pepper in other things. There is a mission you can get basically from the police where you can uh, patrol around, and it's a cool mission because you can do it while you're doing other missions. And you just hit these patrol points. And you'll see me doing that in the video. You hit these little yellow circular patrol points. And they just give you one XP every time you hit one. So when you're in route to other things, you can hit these little XP boosters. Uh, it's essentially what it is. I mean, it's just, it's just an XP booster. Uh, it's a mission that just has a bunch of random points that you drive through. So it's, uh, it's kind of interesting the way that they're handling a lot of this. I think as online racing games go, it's pretty good. Uh, I would say Need for Speed World is probably sort of the king of the mountain as far as I'm aware when it comes to online racing games. And this does have a little bit in common with some of the open world racers. Was it Most Wanted, Need for Speed Most Wanted that was open world? I can't remember now. And I think Burnout Paradise was pretty open world as I recall. Uh, I didn't never play Burnout Paradise, but I always hear people saying it was an open world racing game. Uh, so this is kind of going for that same aesthetic. Uh, they also have multiplayer. Uh, head to head in the form of races. You can just queue up at any time for a race. You'll see some footage at some point of me taking part in a race. Uh, but all in all, I would give this game a big, gigantic thumbs up. It really surprised me, and uh, it is quite an interesting game. It's probably not something I'm going to put a whole lot more time into, but when it comes to free to play games, if I was looking for a free to play race game, Drift City would definitely be something that I would consider. So head on over to gamescampus.com. 
Drift.com, register for an account, download Drift City, take a look at their other games like Shot Online, their online racing game, Heroes in the Sky, their flight sim, Scarlet Legacy, which is their fantasy MMO, or maybe even Kart, which is that collectible card game. I was telling you about. This is one of those uh, one of those guys that just has a central hub with a lot of different games. It is definitely uh, one of the Korean importers, like I said before, uh, reminiscent of Nexon or EG, uh, IJJ.com. Uh, those guys, the guys who did uh, Alliance of Valiant Arms. So, uh, yeah, I mean, head over there, take a look at it. They might have something that interests you. I would say that uh, Drift City is definitely worth at least a look if you're looking for an online racer. So let's move on to goings-on from around the rest of the world of video games and Big Dave is Cheap in general. I hope everybody enjoyed my Rock Hippo revisit, my, my second look at their, uh, at their website, a second chance to make a first impression, as I said, on BigDaveIsCheap.com. I really have to commend these guys on going through with their plan to redo the website. It was really uh, well done. It's not perfect by any means, but it shows an effort on their part to correct something that was a glaring problem for them. I have a lot of high hopes for Rock Hippo, and I hope that this is just the beginning of a lot of success for them as they move forward with a solid website and a good business plan. One thing I really have to commend them on is their choice of games so far, Brawl Busters and Microvolt are similar in their art style and their visual style and the fact that they're both kind of madcap, fast-paced games. But so far, Rock Hippo is setting itself apart from a lot of the other free-to-play companies out there who are importing Korean and uh, and, and uh, even Eastern European and that sort of stuff, uh, games. You know, what they're doing is they're bringing forward interesting stuff. They're not just doing the same old, same old. They don't have an anime MMORPG. They don't have a, uh, a, a, a cartoony uh, a goo kind of uh, MMORPG or fighting game. They don't have an FPS uh, that is a modern military shooter. They are doing things that are different and commendable in many ways similar to what Games Campus is doing. Yes, they have their cutesy anime MMO, they have their more hard edge anime MMO, but they have Drift City and they have Shot Online and they have Cart, which is their uh, CCG. So. I like the fact that we have companies out there who are taking chances for a change. It really got old when you would go to a free-to-play company and you would see that basically they had the same kind of stuff. I mean, some of these companies even have two or three modern military shooters. They have two or three anime MMOs. And it really does get a little bit tiring. And you kind of go through and you look for the special thing that each one has and kind of pick it out. And, and then go on about your day with, with little or no interest in, in most of the rest of the roster. So Rock Hippo looks to be actually moving in a positive direction, showing that uh, you can bring interesting and unique games over here to the States, and we will embrace them. So I was just about to move on to my next item, and I noticed it's also about a free-to-play game. And this show isn't really intended to be about free-to-play games. It just is supposed to be about me playing a free-to-play game and talking to you about things that I find interesting. It just so happens that this week, apparently everything I find interesting revolves around a free-to-play game. So, in other free-to-play news, Vindictus came to Steam today. Or did it? More at 11. Yeah, I uh, tried to install Vindictus like five times and it never worked. Every single time it failed, saying I had no subscription to this free-to-play game. A little bit weird. I wonder if anybody else had that same problem. If you did, let me know in the comments below. Maybe we can commiserate about our misery at not being able to install the hack and slash MMORPG Vindictus. Now, if you're really desperate to play it, you could, of course, go over to Nexon.net, Nexon being the overseer of Vindictus and several other games, and you can install the direct download version if you so wish. Uh, Nexon is another one of those companies, I mentioned them earlier in comparison to Rock Hippo. Uh, they do have some interesting games if you do want to head over and create an account with Nexon. Uh, I can definitely recommend Dungeon Fighter Online for a little bit of a good beat em up time. Uh, I can sort of recommend Combat Arms. Uh, it's a fun game if you're not in a match with a hacker. Uh, the game seems to be riddled with hackers. I know Nexon is constantly doing things to try to better that, uh, but when I reviewed the game for free-to-play FPS week back in the first month of the channel's existence, I think, uh, I actually recorded a game with a hacker in it. 
So, uh, not really good press for them there. Uh, but, you know, in the end, uh, it's, it's an adequate uh, modern military shooter. It has a little more in common with, uh, with maybe a Counter-Strike than it does with Modern Warfare, just because this game came out ages ago. Like, it came out in, like, 2002 or something. It's an older game, is what I'm trying to say here. But by, that, by no means does that mean that it's bad. Uh, also, if you're really into, like, masochism, there's Maple Story. Uh, no, seriously, Maple Story is an alright game, I guess, if you like that sort of thing. I just have a weird history with Maple Story, so we're not going to go into it, and I'm never going to mention Maple Story on this channel again, so fuck Maple Story. So, wow, that really turned out to be a ringing endorsement for Nexon.net, huh? Yeah. Nexon.net, the best in free to play online games. If you like hackers, games that annoy the hell out of people, or games that don't work on Steam, come to Nexon.net and sign up today. Random thought. Did anyone else think it was kind of weird when the little pop-up came up that said Duke Nukem Forever was the pre-order, quote, bonus for Spec Ops The Line? Okay. Wow. So according to the internet gaming media, Orcs Must Die 2 is coming out on July 30th. Really excited about that, and I really, really hope to get my first real collab going with that. Maybe I can convince Mr. Light Jimmy? I don't know, maybe somebody else? Anybody out there? But Orcs Must Die July 30th, really excited for that. That's one of those games that I never really played enough. I played a lot of that game, maybe 20, 25 hours, in a really short period of time, and then ended up shelving it for other things. Oh, but that reminds me, speaking of underplayed Steam games, did you guys see the tool that was released this past week that will show you your unplayed Steam game percentage? I think mine was like 60%. That's 166 games on Steam that I've never even touched. Oh man, so I think I'm going to spend the rest of the year trying to get to 50-50. And that's going to be difficult because my Steam library is always expanding, so I'm going to have to put some definite effort into getting break even on that. I want 50-50 by the end of the year. Link is in the description below to that tool, and a gigantic thanks to another tool that I know, Mr. Matt Yee, aka Impromptu Gaming. I'm just kidding with you, Matt. You're a great guy. If you're not subscribed to his channel, you should be, because when the dude puts out videos, they are amazing. He's a natural on camera, really great, funny guy, and I think he's going places. I don't know if it's in this YouTube game, but I could see him in radio. Not that I'm saying you have the face for radio. I mean, you know, you could be, like, the quirky best friend in a sitcom. The point is, you can do it, Matt. Go out there, use those talents, those natural abilities that you have, and make something of yourself before you become a grizzled old man like me, who has not but a few choices left ahead of him in his short, short life. And on that depressing note, I think we should go ahead and end this episode of Free to Play Fridays. How's everybody liking the format? Still working for you? Five minutes talking about the game, ten minutes rambling on about whatever's in my head. How's that working out? Good? Bad? No? Well, if you feel compelled, let me know in the comments below. You know, you can like my videos, all that kind of stuff. I'm not being that YouTube guy, but it helps me to know that what I'm doing is getting through to people. I know that a large percentage of people who are on YouTube and watch videos aren't the folks who like videos and comment and stuff like that, and that's perfectly fine. And I know I have about five or so people who do like to comment and get into conversations and that sort of stuff, so I welcome that. But if anybody else is out there thinking... Uh, you know, I'm not really sure if I want to comment to give this guy feedback. I take criticism really well for the most part if your criticism is constructive uh, and you're not my wife. Um, but yeah, I, I generally do pretty good with your feedback, especially if it's in an effort to help me, to help me make the channel better or to make my videos or video production better. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Otherwise, this show is going to keep coming at you just the same way that it is, like it or not. Next week, we'll try to do Vindictus in the Free to Play Friday slot if it gets working on Steam. So hopefully I will see all of you guys here next week. Not really sure what I'm going to do during the week as far as video production. It's a weird couple of days, but I will definitely get something out for your consumption next week. All right, guys, I have been Big Dave, and as always, take it easy.